What's going on guys? In today's episode, we're going to be covering why rotations are so key to a successful game and some of the best rotations that you and your team can utilize throughout the match. With Fortnite changing, like we want to make sure that we're staying on top of what is best. And as always, man, we made it simple for you guys to get ahead of the game with this pro guide. All right, so the first thing is this, man. We want to understand with the rotations is that it can sometimes make or break your game, you know, and often leading into how your game is going to be played out. And so what I mean by this is that it's very, very easy to get sidetracked while we are playing the game. And there are tons of things always going on around us. And in the moment, we're not always thinking about the best possible way that we're going to rotate into zone and ultimately set yourself up in a nice position. You know, one way to really make sure that our rotations are on point is practicing and just testing them out. You know, how Having knowledge of the rotation in which we're going to take from the POI we landed at is crucial. And even small factors like how we rotate through the POI we landed at can really make a difference in our early game. So if you're looking to get better Fortnite, like we've got the perfect thing for you guys, world-class coaching that anyone can benefit from with coaches that are available 24 hours a day, man, seven days a week. In the last week alone, our coaches helped 100 students climb from contenders to champions. So if you want to be next, visit Pro Guides and the link below to get started. All right. So early game rotation, like for example, I look at Misty Meadows, we think about how the POI is split into two different areas. When rotating from one side to another, we want to make sure that the path we take is on point for our objective like if we see players fighting most times it's okay to really take the path that is the fastest as they are just focused on the fight and not at all on their surroundings just making it a little bit easier for you to really approach the fight quicker without using as much resources in most areas of our rotations we want to focus on the consistent route you know paths that have available farms and potentially more loot so we can prioritize setting ourselves up better for the fight and the end game and so it's also important that we talk about information that we're gathering as we're rotating and you know with this we often mention elevation and awareness okay so with elevation this is going to give us a much better look into what we're approaching so we don't get hit with any randomness like not knowing where the player is and just getting off guard last thing that we should mention with early game rotations is that depending on the location we're at we can oftentimes use our surroundings as cover so make sure that you're staying out of the open and finding paths that's going to work well for you all right so when we think about main rotations throughout the map we think about areas that are sometimes the quickest you know more valuable and oftentimes the areas less traveled to reduce potential of running into players with storm closing so we're gonna dive in and just talk about some main rotations that you can perfect no matter you know the type of play style you have first thing to understand is like what is the goal of our match with public games arenas and tournaments we can use all these rotations but it's important to really understand that with some formats you might need to switch things up a bit second thing is is with the willingness to adapt and with this comes good decision making so we're going to have games where the circle pulls hard in a certain direction to where we have to really rotate farther than normal. When things like this occur, we have to make sure that we're prioritizing the rotations even more and really have to start to build a solid game plan. Also, with this, like we really have to think about the worst case scenarios like an engagement happening, but still having time to make it to the zone. Once we can dial in on those key points of our rotations, we can really focus on the main part of it, which is where and how we're going to be rotating. When it comes to figuring out the best rotations for where we're landing at and what we're aiming to accomplish, we really want to think about the surroundings of that area. So with this new season, we have some pretty cool ways to rotate that is going to save you a lot more time as well as get you more stacked to really just boost your gameplay even more. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen the cube areas with the slip streams that are placed in five different areas of the map, kind of wrapping all the way around, giving you pretty good access to it no matter where you land at. These spots are super good for loot and great areas to rotate through. There are tons of chests, floor loot, ammo crates, and everything is out in the open, which gives you a good eye before you decide what you want or need. We really do enjoy these spots and you know really what they have to offer. So if you're ever passing by one of these areas and feel like you already have everything you need, we're going to tell you exactly why you should be stopping there no matter what. So now mentioning the slipstreams, they really don't really get you too far at all, even though you can deploy your glider coming out of them. But there are some interesting ways that you can use the slipstream in a more positive way for your rotations. OK, so at these parts of the map, you're also going to find shadow cubes and bounce paths that are placed around the surroundings. And so when you're using the shadow cubes, they not only make you partially invisible, which we already know, but they also give you a zero gravity effect, meaning that we're able to jump and just fly at longer distances than normal. Now, mentioning the interesting ways that you can use the slipstream would be first paired with the shadow cube. So once you take a shadow cube and get inside the stream, you wanna look straight up outward of the stream until you have fully exited and are flying up. 
as you are still looking up, just exited the stream, you wanna hit the boost effect so you can use with the shadow cube and then immediately just look forward. Look up and boost into the air and then look forward, repeat this, okay, until the effect has fully gone off and you're gonna be left to glide wherever you wanna go as you're gonna be high in the sky from this play. So something to keep in mind, guys, is that there is a bug where, you know, sometimes it won't allow you to redeploy. Also, you don't have to use the slipstream method. You can just boost from the ground and just make your way into the sky. The slipstream just starts you off a bit higher to make it easier. So remember, all right, the best rotations are the easiest ones. So really just think about how you can just implement this into your games to reduce a lot of time you spend making your way throughout the map. Also, with this play, you're going to reduce a lot of time you would have to rotate on foot since it gives you such long distances of travel. Also, we have tested the bounce pass and shadow cube combination in multiple aspects and boy, whew, do you go flying. One thing that you do want to know is that certain bounce pads will not launch you as far. So the ones that tend to be on higher elevation will launch you further. So when you do try this out and just feel like you haven't gone as far as you thought you would, make sure that you're hitting the correct pads. All right, so something that you should know as well when you use a shadow cube is that it's an effect for about roughly 40 to 45 seconds. And with that, we also found that if you time the duration of the cube's effect and hit the bounce pad at around the 35 second mark, you're gonna be led to deploy as you're coming down from being launched in the sky, just like the slipstream play. But sometimes it's not taking you as far. And so we can implement this tip and kill time with looting as well as just being unseen. Just remember guys, like we can't build while being affected by the shadow cube. All right, so with that being said, let's talk about some rotations that don't involve the slipstream areas. Okay, so like we talked about earlier, the main rotations have a lot to do with our our goals of the match and so when we're playing public matches we have less stress on us to really rotate due to the fact that players get eliminated a bit quicker than some other types of matches but it's still important that we think ahead of time right especially about our best possible route and for example like we're going to be referencing a misty meadow to bony birds rotation once we see what the circle looks like from there we can just get some information on how we should approach our next rotation all right so let's just say that the zone pulls towards pleasant park and we have to rotate pretty far and with this, sometimes we're going to have to sacrifice times of us looting or farming on zones that stretch, right? But that doesn't mean that we can't make up for it on a rotation. Leaving Misty Meadow, we're going to want to head towards the Spire Tower in the middle of the water. Keep in mind, guys, that we're going to be out in the open with this, so we need to make sure that we have enough mats until our next source of farms really comes along. Also, remember that we're just referencing this rotation. You can use the same format no matter the route that you're running. All right, anyways, like from there, we can grab a bit of loot and trees to keep refreshing our kit and take the Spire Tower out once we're ready. We're gonna land at the brick area that's gonna give us access to some more good mats and just put on a path to more loot, as well as a jump pad at the bot outpost that's going to really get you where you wanna be. So looking at this rotation, all right, we have utilized the farm and looting method with good movement that really involved less stress and RNG. Anytime we can reduce those factors, guys, especially RNG, we really wanna take those advantages, I'm telling you, because you know they're gonna put you in a much better state, also giving us less excuses for if we do lose fights, meaning like more of an explanation on times when things go wrong. All right, so now let's get into rotations for the type of match that you're going to be playing. There are some things that you want to ask yourself, like what are you looking for for mid game fights? Are we aiming to play a consistent match and focus more on the limbs late game? From there, we can just ultimately find out like what our next approach is. And if we're looking for mid game fights, we want to think about surrounding POIs and rotations, you know, that other players are going to be taking from those areas, you know, to really just stay on a path that will likely give you that mid game fight that you're looking for. So when we're thinking about good, consistent games, like we, we're definitely thinking about good rotations. Again, you know, analyzing the zone and how it's going to play out is the first factor. You're going to want to make sure that you're really setting yourself up for the late game. And sometimes you can play edge of zone to get yourself more stacked. Those times we do get zones, like it's important to understand how good that is for us, man. Like and how much more time that you can prioritize to level up your kit. Also, I really want you guys to really play confident with yourself and just get out there and just take mid game fights, right? Get into those third parties, you know, because without facing those things, it's gonna be really hard to really get to that next level of play that you're reaching for. And just remember, you know, even when we lose fights, there's always something that we can learn from it, always, all right? Don't be negative, be positive. You're always growing no matter what. So always take it with a good mindset and hit that VOD review so you can just really dial in some of your flaws 
and just really correct him for the next game. A bunch of regrets, Tommy. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Those were the best ways to rotate in season eight. So I really want you guys to get out there. Try some of these new methods out. Use the advice that we're giving you in this video. I'm telling you, man, you're going to improve. So keep going. Don't quit. Don't surrender. Once again, this is your motivation guy. The one who believes in you and is really just cheering for you, man, to be the best you can be. Not only in this game, but also in life. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.